I, I, you hear of all the nightmare stories of, of people who remodel a home, and there definitely are nightmare stories out there. And a lot of those nightmare stories, I think, have to do with, obviously, um, the contractor who they're having the nightmare with. And I think that it becomes more of a nightmare for a homeowner who's trying to renovate a project when they leave most of the control up to the contractor. I have found that when I control parts of the project, then since I'm in control, the project runs smoother. Meaning, I will, rather than just saying, you know, um, I'm looking to get a modern looking this or that, and then the contractor comes and shows me or the interior designer comes and shows me a couple options of this or that, right? With the internet, you can just Google whatever this or that is and do a quick comparison yourself. Don't leave those decisions up to the up to a third party. Just take control and go, that's the that's the hardware I want on my cabinets. That's the light fixture I want, you know, in my kitchen. That's the light fixture I want dangling over the dining room table. And if you start purchasing these things just online or, or coordinating with your contractor that these are the items that you're going to want, it takes less of their guesswork out for them and makes it a lot easier for them and obviously a lot easier for you too. So I would say that take as much control of a project as you possibly can. And, you know, a lot of times we want to hire someone so we don't have to think about those things. Um, however, that's great if you find yourself in a situation that everything's running smooth. But it's those nightmare stories that you hear about contractors that um, I think it's a good idea to, to take control, obviously. Um, and, and maybe, that, like I said, maybe that means you're ordering it. You know, here's the other great thing is everything you can purchase now can be delivered, right? You purchase it on homedepot.com, it's delivered. You don't have to actually go get it, Amazon. So maybe you take control, purchase these things, and then just have them delivered because here's the reality when you pay a contractor to go pick up the light fixture for you to go pick up the chandelier to go pick up the mirror they're going to pay for the product and then they're going to pay they're going to charge you for their time right rightfully so they, they don't do that stuff for free they're not going to go shopping for you for free um they're going to they might have um discounts at certain stores that they'll buy stuff at, but they're still going to charge you to go go and pick it up. And so if you purchase the stuff yourself, have it delivered to the house, then that's one less thing that you need to, you know, one, one way to minimize, uh, kind of help your budget, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, if you have an endless budget that you can spend as much as you want, great. Just pay your contractors to pick it up. Now, there are things that make sense for them to pick up, like lumber, you know, um, I'll have, or, or, or sheetrock, right? Like big pallets or big, uh, you know, bunch of, bunch of slabs of um, drywall. So, cause my contractors have the big trucks and the trailers. That's something that I'll just say, hey, listen, the next time you're at Home Depot, you don't have to go running there now, but the next time you go, would you mind picking up the sheetrock? Cause I think we're gonna need it here in the next week or two, sure. And I just remind them to get it so that they don't have to make a trip specifically for it. They're just going to get it the next time they go. Um, however, those things are big and that makes sense for them to pick up. But like the light fixture, stuff like that, I mean, I think if you can take more control, you're going to find your project running a little bit smoother, right? So those are really, you know, things that you'll hear the industry use the term sizzle factors. Things that will create sizzle are stuff like new light fixtures, right? Um, brand new light fixtures can really, especially if, they're, if it illuminates well, can really brighten up and change the appearance of a room where dark lighting, um, nobody likes dark light lighting, right? You, you want your light to be bright, your room to be bright. So I would say hardware, like meaning the knobs and handles on cabinetry, they create sizzle. I mean, you can definitely pick ugly hardware, but if you got beautiful hardware, that's, that's sizzle. Um, light fixtures, that's sizzle. Stone ca countertops, or like I said, quartz countertops, that's sizzle. Um, and then, of course, whatever the most modern color of cabinetry is, that's sizzle. And 
light fixtures are not that expensive, hardware is not that expensive, refacing a kitchen is a little more expensive than the light fixtures of course, but not that expensive. Probably the biggest expense is going to be if you had to do new floor or the countertop, right? And if you didn't have to do new floor, then really you're looking at your countertop. So as you can see, it can be very affordable to remodel a home. And again, going back to the story I shared earlier on the show where I met with this family, that's kind of what they needed to do. There was not a lot. And I said, listen, you guys can really improve the look of your home if you just did these few things, which aren't that expensive. And assuming you have that budget or you can get an equity line of credit, it may be worth it because you would drastically improve the value of your home to sell for a much higher price, giving you more profit on the sale. However, as I, as I mentioned earlier on the show, I told them if they chose not to go that route and they really wanted to sell to me, I'd be happy to buy it. But I gave them advice that was going to be able to help them um, get more money in their pocket. All right, so we're going to take another quick commercial break and... We're going to keep talking about remodeling homes. And so when we get back, we'll dive in deeper, kind of just more now the rest of the home. We talked about the kitchens and the baths. Um, let's talk about the rest of the house when we come back. Okay, before we part ways, in case you have a dog or know someone else who does have a dog, I wanted to take a quick second to show you the snap leash. The snap leash can literally do so many things. And I'm going to share with you one of the many cool things that it can do. As you can see, the snap leash is designed with two swivel hooks, one on each end. This end has a cushion stitched into it to make it comfortable when walking your dog. Now, all you have to do is take this swivel hook, put it into this very first grommet, and now you've got your handle. Okay, so now, let's imagine you're at the park and you want to secure your pet quickly, safely, and easily to a park bench, a tree, or a pole because you just want to sit down and relax. Well. All you need to do is take this swivel hook, remove it from the very first grommet, wrap this leash around any size tree or pole or park bench, and put it into the appropriate grommet, and now you have secured your pet quickly, safely, and easily. And when it's time to head home, another great feature about the snap leash is you can simply wrap it around your waist for hands-free walking. Lastly, if you ever accidentally forget your waist bags at home, these grommets make a great place to fasten the waist bag so you never leave home without them. And if you want to see all of the other cool things that the snap leash can do, then please just click on the link below and find out why so many others are falling in love with the snap leash.